Hey guys and welcome to my crafty corner. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our page. Today we're going to work on etching glasses and dyeing it so that they actually become a little bit brighter when we're working on it. So when working with your etching cream you're going to want to use your vinyl to use as your stencil so you will be weeding the actual design that you created as opposed to weeding around and keeping the actual design that you created in Design Space or any of your um, designing softwares. That's the part that you're physically gonna remove because now this is your stencil and you'll be filling in that inside part um, to get your design. I do recommend that when you are creating your design and you're cutting it off on your machine, you do leave a good bit of space between the actual design and the edge of your stencil just so that you don't have any um, tight spaces of having the etching cream come off along on the edge um, I do also suggest not to design anything too thin or too small for the vinyl to just kind of have a hard um, a hard time keeping that stencil down so like this little portion of the flower that I'm removing here those lines were kind of thin so it was imperative for me to be sure not to rip any of those lines and to keep them as flat on the glass as possible now as you start to work with your vinyl onto your surface I like to start with the middle, especially on glasses where there's a little bit of curvature on the glass. Um, I like to push down the middle and then work my way out on the left and the right of the project. And I like to focus on in between each of my letters or parts of my design, just to make sure that there are no bubbles, no lifts, no folds, anything of the sort that will distort any of my lines. I like to make sure that I have crisp lines when I'm painting on the etching cream. So I go over it a few times and you see, you just wanna scratch through if you see any of those little bumps, any parts that look lifted. And again, really, really focusing on those um, edges of your letters. Now this is removable vinyl that I used on this cup in specific. So you see that when I start to lift, it starts to come off a little bit more. So using permanent vinyl will definitely help you with that. It'll keep onto the cup with a stronger grip. And as I'm pulling here, parts of it are ripping, but that's okay because we are not keeping the actual vinyl on as long as you put it back in a place where it will keep and not distort your image, you'll be fine. So when I remove my transfer sheet, I like to just go over it again. I use my nail, I use a little bit of my weeding tools just to clean up any of the places that might have um, distorted when I remove the transfer sheet. And going over, you just really, really, really wanna make sure everything is flat. Once this etching cream touches anywhere on this glass, it will leave its mark on there. So it's important to make sure there are no bubbles, no lifts, no um, folds, your lines are good, everything is where you want it to be. So you see that my vinyl is on there as flat as can be. And we are going to start now with the etching. So at this point, I'm going to use Armor Etch. Uh, you can just use a normal paintbrush. I like to use one that has a little bit of a stronger hold on it, not a soft bristle, so that as I'm going through, you'll see that we use a dabbing motion. We're not painting and we're not stroking like a like a normal painting. We're just dabbing on into our grooves here. Now while I'm putting the etching cream onto the glass, in order to make sure that everywhere has a thick enough um, coverage and making sure that everything is etching equally, I put the glass up to the light and I look to see if I can kind of see anything through it. If I can see any little gaps or any light coming through it, I just put a little bit more. While that's setting, I go ahead and start to weed for the next cup. So while that second cup is setting, you can come back to your first cup 
and start to remove some of that etching cream that is on there. It should take about five minutes. Uh, sometimes I leave it for five minutes. I'll go back and play with it just a little bit to see how it's etching and add a little more on there. This cup in specific, I did about two minutes extra on there just to ensure that we have a good coverage. So all of that extras that we were dabbing on there, no worries, we saved it. You wanna be sure when you're scraping as well not to take off any from the vinyl area that we have there. And that's why it's important when you're cutting to have some extra wiggle room. You can see here we've washed it off. We took it to a sink with some warm water and we washed off our etching cream. And now we're going to use Rub and Buff. So I'm just making sure everything here is dry. Now with Rub and Buff, a little bit goes a very long way. There's two methods to doing this. I like to do the first one here that I'm gonna show you is my favorite. I like to leave my stencil on. It's a little bit easier of a cleanup. So you just put a little bit of dots in different various areas and then you come back with a soft cloth and you are going to rub it in in a circular motion now the silver goes on very nicely the gold in rub and buff can show a little bit of streaks so after I go in with my round motions and everything I like to go back in and do a uniform up and down streak through everything or side to side depending on how um, the design goes and you just want to go through um, it is not the easiest thing to clean up on surfaces that are not on the glass in the vinyl so just be careful when you are using it um, to just not touch it and put it on something else by mistake it is super easy to clean off of the glass so you see I'm going through it and using a good bit of, of um, the rub and buff on each of the letters just to make sure we have good coverage. It only sticks on what is actually etched. So you're okay using this and you can see I'm going back through with my up and down motions just to make sure everything is covered. When using this method of keeping the stencil on you want to be sure you're getting into all of the parts of um, where we're etched. So using my finger, I'm going into all of the little um, grooves and making sure that none of the parts that are against the stencil are left out. So you take your time and you just go into each one of those lines and making sure that there's full coverage everywhere that was etched. So now that all of our um, area is covered, in the rub and buff, we'll take another part of our uh, soft cloth here and we're going to start to wipe off some of the areas just to make sure that nothing is on there too much. Again, staying into our vinyl and making sure that we don't come off of our glass too much and we're just wiping off some of that excess. And so here's why I personally like to leave my stencil on when I use the rub and buff. Although when you're rubbing it in, you have to pay a little bit more attention to your lines and those areas to be crisp, but the cleanup is so much better. Once I remove this vinyl here, all of what would have been that negative area, that negative space is clean. And my cleanup now is very minimal. You can use the same soft cloth and just using the edge of your nail to kind of go over and clean up. Rub and Buff is going to remove off of all of the glass spaces. Wherever there was not etch cream, it's going to just come off. I do not suggest using anything wet because this right here, it's, when it's dry, you can literally just pick it right off. When it's wet, it kind of spreads it a little bit more. So right here I'm just using my nail on the soft cloth and just going very close into where's etched. When you're scratching over the areas that were already etched, it will not peel off when you're scratching here. All of this that you're picking off right now is literally just what's on the glass itself. 
If there are any areas that you feel are too light or you need a little bit of touch up, you can go ahead right now and add in that rub and buff and buff it right back in with those circular motions and then scratch the remaining off right then and there with your soft cloth. So now cup two, this is the second method that we can use. Once you wash off all of your etching cream, you can remove your stencils right away. Again, making sure that your cup is completely dry, you remove your stencil, give it a good try, make sure all of your etch is appearing properly um, in the way that you would like it to be. And then we're going to add the rub and buff directly on the cup again using just a small amount throughout your design and then you're going to use your soft cloth again to use circular motions and rub that um, rub and buff right in. This time you are having some of the rub and buff on the negative spaces but that's okay because you'll see shortly that it just rubs right off again. As you rub the excess off, you'll start to see some of the areas again that you can use your nail and softly go in and clean up your edges, clean up your lines. And again, as a reminder, this is not going to scrape off of what is etched. What is etched is actually holding on to the rub and buff. So this is what's going to give your design that vibrant look and when it gets cold or the liquid is inside of it, it is not going to disappear as it would when there is just the etch, etch cream by itself. So as you see, anywhere that just has exposed glass and this rub and buff is on, you just use your nail and just clean it right off. It's almost like magic. <laughs> it's so effortless and it's so easy and the outcome is so amazing on here. So again, enjoy your cups, have fun while you etch, while you rub and you buff on there, and feel free to tag us on Instagram, Facebook, um, here in the YouTube comments if you need any help.